Hi everyone, uh, today I am going to uh, discuss about the uh, gradual inherent flow. So in the last class uh, we have just defined what is gradual inherent flow. So who can rem remember the definition? Can you remember that? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it is uh, basically when the flow is not uniform, it is a gradual inherent flow. Most of the cases in the real world situation, the flow is not uniform, right? It is gradually inherent flow. So today we'll see what type of flow profile will be there. By this time you know there are five types of channel slopes, right? Okay. So and we also uh, derive this uh, equation. So what is the basic equation for gradually inherent flow? Is this equation dy over dx is equal to s naught minus s f divided by one minus f r squared? S naught is the slope of the channel bottom, and S f is the slope of the energy red line. If I add all the energy, then it will be energy head, and then if I just plot the red line, it will be energy red line. So slope of the energy red line is S f is also called friction slope, right? And F r is the fruit number. You know, if the fruit number is less than one, it is subcritical flow. If it is one, it is critical, and if it is greater than one, it is super critical flow. So based on this information, we will calculate whether the flow profile is one of the 13 types, right? So see this equation is, this, what type of equation it is? It is a differential equation, right? So, so that uh, if you also want to get the exact solution, we cannot find out any exact solution. We have to solve it by numerical method. Right? So in this uh, lecture, we will just see the flow profiles and we will also compute how can I determine whether the flow profile is uh, mild or it is steep. So here is this. So based on the channel slope, we can determine the critical slope of the channel or it is a subcritical or it is supercritical. So we have already uh, learned this, right? At first, we'll use this many equation, assuming that the channel flow is uniform, because we assumed two types of assumption for gradually head flow in the last class. Based on this, we can use this equation, the same equation that we have used for uniform flow, and from this equation, we can calculate the slope of the energy grid line, SF. And here is the five types of slope. So, if I just compute the depth of water, so I can determine the channel slope also. But in the last class we have seen, I have to compute the channel slope. But for this case, if I know the critical depth, and if I know any depth of water, then I can determine by comparing the depth of water with the critical depth of water. And I can just determine whether the slope is mild, steep, or it is critical, or horizontal, or adverse. Right? So here is the notation. When the depth of water, uh, for example, it is here. If uh, this is the channel, and this is critical depth, for any specific flow rate or discharge, there will be a specific critical depth. And if the flow is seen to be uniform, the depth of water is called normal depth. Right? And based on these two information, the normal depth and the critical depth, there will be three. One, two, and three. John. John one, two, and three. And if the slope of the channel is mild, so there will be three profiles for mild slope. Right? Mild slope. And if it is steep, there will be three other profiles for steep. If it is critical, there will be three different types of critical, so it is nine. And if it is just horizontal, there will be two types of pro uh, profile, so it is 11. And if it is adverse, there will be another two types of profiles, so total 13 different flow profiles may exist in a certain river or channel flow. So here you can see five types of slope. If the slope is mined, the profile will be denoted as M1 here, if it is located at one zone number one, and if it is here, it will be M2, and if it is here, it is M3. This is how we will just specify the name of the channel profile. 
or water surface profile, right? So here it is. There are three types of zone. So one, two, three. So if the depth of water is normal, and if this is the line, we call it normal depth line, right? And when the depth of water is critical, the line is serial, critical depth line. And based on these two information, we will determine whether the profile is M1, S1, or C1, or A1, or H1, right? So here it is. So for example, I have just calculated the channel slope as mild. Where the slope will be mild? If the slope is less than critical slope, right? So if SC is less than S0, that means if the value of critical slope is 0 0.002, and if it is 0 0.0015, that means this is less than this value. So the slope of the channel is mild. And if I assume here, it is mild slope. By right, this time I know the slope of the channel is mild. So this here. This is zone number one. This is two and this is three. And uh, this is YC and this is YN. N B L and C D L. So there will be three possibilities, right? For example, if the depth of water is here, then any depth is above the normal depth line. For my slope, the normal depth line will be above the critical depth line. It is fixed because the flow will be subcritical, and you know for the subcritical flow, the normal depth or any depth of water is greater than the critical depth. So if I assume the depth of water is here, it is above the normal depth line and it is also above the critical depth line. So the condition is here. If the depth of water is greater than Yn, greater than normal depth line, and if the depth of water is also greater than critical depth line, that means it is specifying this location. Right? So what will happen to this equation? dy dx is equal to S0 minus SF over 1 minus FR squared. So for this case, the slope of the channel will be greater than slope of the energy grid line. Right? That means we have pass value for numerator. And since the depth of water is greater than critical depth, the flow is subcritical. Subcritical means the fluid number FR, this FR is less than 1. So if it is less than 1, that means the denominator will also be positive, right? It is positive. That means positive and positive it is positive greater than 0. That means the flow profile will be backwater profile and it will look like this. It will be like this. And when it is located here in zone number 2, what will happen with this equation? So it will be less than this one because see, for example here, the y is less than yn because it is here. But it's still y is greater than yc. That means for this case it will be minus and it's plus. That means it is less than 0. So when it is located in zone number 2, the profile will be drawdown. Means it will be like this. It will be like this. And when it will be here in zone number 3, so it will be minus and it will be also minus. So minus minus it will be plus. That means it is greater than 0. Again, the profile is what? It is backwater. So when it will be here, the profile is this. So the surface of the water will be like this when it will be located at zone number 3. And the profile will be like this one. It is called drawdown when it is located in zone number 3 for mild slope. But for steep slope, it will be different. For critical slope, it will be also different. Right? So this is how we can compute the type of profile, whether it is backward or it is drawdown curve. So I already have covered this. So in today's lecture, so far we have understood the types of channel, right? 
there will be 13 different types of flow profile, and if it is uh, critical slope, the profile will be called C1, C2, C3, and so on and so forth, right? And uh, we have already learned the type of profile, whether it is drawdown or it is backward curve, right? So what will happen? Can anyone just tell me if I construct any dam here? The slope is mine, so what will be the flow profile? This is before the dam. It will be the first one, M1 profile. So it will look like this. Okay, so this is the end of this lecture for today. So if you have any more questions, you can ask. Why would you also call the longitudinal profile? This profile? You will see if I construct any hydraulic structure like dam or regulator, so the water will be disturbed. So what do we have to do? We have to specify the depth of water at a certain distance, which is located upstream from the dam or any hydraulic structure. Right? If you construct a dam like two kilometers from a city, so what will be the effect of the water at the city? So you have to be able to calculate the effect of the water. That's why it's the backwater effect. If the rise of water level is even 5 centimeter, the effect will be like 20 or 30 kilometer. That's why you have to be able to calculate the backwater effect by using this equation, which is the differential equation. All right, thank you. Is there any other question? Okay, thank you.